Hey, it's Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and I'm about to show you how to release your quad tendon fascia right next to and maybe even under your kneecap. And then we're gonna get into some of the other fascia in and around your knee joint as well. And I'm gonna give you a few mobilization exercises, but first I wanna talk about who this is for and why you should try this one. Um, because it's a little weird. We're getting into a, a weird area that can feel really sensitive, the kneecap, right? Um, and all you need for this one are your opposable thumbs. Um, so no tool needed other than your body, and hopefully you have some good strong hands. Uh, but this one is for any of you who have had some kind of acute knee injury. So uh, either a, a knee twisting injury, um, an impact injury, somebody kicking you, a horse kicking you, um, a car accident, jamming your leg, falling off a ladder, falling, skiing, something like that where your knee either twists suddenly or there's some kind of impact to your knee and you end up with a knee injury. Now it could be like me, um, currently an MCL injury. So it could be a ligament injury, right? The MCL could be the meniscus. It could be the LCL or the ACL, um, but some kind of knee injury, right? Or maybe you don't have a diagnosis, but you have knee pain after the experience. Um, if you're ever in a really acute injury scenario like that, what tends to happen is the, uh, the dominant muscles that you have in, around, in and around your knee um, and, and the tendons that attach there uh, are going to contract really powerfully to protect you. Um, and a lot of those muscles and tendons will contract uh, aside from the area that's the most vulnerable and perhaps getting injured in the actual acute injury incident. Um, so in my case, I twisted my knee really badly. And for me, the quad tendons were the most adhesed. And I think in a knee injury, um, any kind of knee injury like that that I can think about, it's really gonna be probably the quad tendons that get really tight like that. Now, you could go other places in your body as well, and I always encourage exploring everything. It's something I call mapping. Um, and this is just one thing I'm gonna show you. Uh, but um, if you never had those adhesions taken care of, so if you never had a physical therapist, a massage therapist, anybody get in there, either with their hands or a Graston tool, ouch! That sounds awful to me. Um, but if you've never had anybody get in there uh, right next to your kneecap, basically into those tendons and maybe even under your kneecap a little bit, uh, chances are those adhesions are still there. So even if you had that injury a long time ago, it may be an area to check. Um, so some of the classic signs or symptoms that you may need to explore this area would be if you have um, constantly kind of clicking knees or anytime you straighten your leg all the way, there's a pop or a click. Um, or if you can't straighten your leg all the way and you feel like something's stuck or just jammed kind of under your kneecap, uh, oftentimes it's not super painful. It's just a weird feeling. Um, you feel like something's in the way, basically. Um, if you have trouble bending your knee, this would be a great one to try uh, due to potentially just really dense, shortened tissue around your kneecap where bending your knee now is, feels really difficult. Um, so all of those would be reasons to try what I'm about to show you. If you don't have an accident in your history, uh, a knee injury accident like that, you could still try this, see if there's anything in there. Um, but most of you know what I'm about to show you is gonna be relevant to those of you who have had a knee injury. And I wanna say that even if you had uh, the injury or you know the uh, accident, injury, fall, whatever it was, if it happened a long time ago, um, you still could get in here and find some fascial adhesions. The sooner you get in here to release them after the um, acute injury, the better. But it's my firm belief that we can reverse the age of our fascia no matter how long it's been that it's been tight. So even if it's been 20 years since you had maybe a really bad car accident or fall, I would still try to get in here if you haven't yet. Now, if it has been a really long time, uh, you may have to work through some density in the superficial fascia um, before you can even get to the tendons. So that might mean getting on a foam roller and actually doing some really low quad fascia release first, um, or just working with uh, the, the 
you know, more superficial outer layers of your fascia with what I'm about to show you before you get into the deeper layers because fascia kind of, um, it wraps everything. And if the outer layers are really dense, it's not gonna let you even get to those inner layers until you release that first. So you're gonna be using your thumbs. This does require some hand dexterity and strength. My hands sometimes will get really tired, so I just want to throw that out there. So if you need to take a break, take a break. Um, but basically, you, you're going to search all the, you know, all the way around your kneecap. Um, but what I want to show you first is your quad tendons. Um, so, boom. There's a little clunk. And it might be a little difficult to see. Um, just because these are not really giant violent clunk clunks. They were <laughs> a lot bigger, but they've shrunk. So you're compressing it with your fingers and then you're rotating your leg back and forth. So I want to be super clear here. I am not just manipulating with my hands and like pushing that adhesion around. I'm trying to pin it and I'm actually using my other fingers here to stabilize into a real compression and then my leg is the thing doing the movement. This is how we really release fascia from the inside out, is when you recruit the tissue to perform a movement, a range of motion under compression, and then it shears that fascia. So that's what we're really trying to do. That creates that high water content. So you can do that as much as you want um, on each tendon. So that's gonna probably be the, the vastus lateralis there. Um, coming more on the top of the quad. If you have one here on the top, it's gonna to be rectus femoris. Now, I can feel something. There it is. <laughs> um, so you're gonna to have to search for these. Um, they can be slippery, they can be elusive. They're swimming in a sea of healthier fascia here typically, and they themselves are the dense, unhealthy parts, so they can kind of slip away from you. Um, boom. That was a good one. Um, there we go. So right now I'm staying kind of far away <laughs> from my kneecap, even though I'm pretty close here. Um, so there's my kneecap. That's where we were. So there's a, there's a good inch or so between. Now, what I want to show you is how to get really close. So you would, you know, I, I have spent so much time around here. So you can, I'm not gonna bore you guys and have you watch an hour of me releasing this, this fascia here, but you can spend a lot of time in this area because it's really dense. Um, it might take you a while to even find a clunk. And then once you find it, you might wanna um, go over it, you know, um, a lot. And of course my general rule with fascia release is 30 to 40 seconds per spot. But that's if you're a beginner. Um, so if you are a beginner, maybe keep it to 30 to 40 seconds. If you're not a beginner and you like how fascia release feels, or you know for sure you're not in some kind of fight, flight or freeze response, um, basically reacting against what we're doing here, if you can relax into it, or maybe even consider that it feels good, you can stay on here for a minute, two minutes, doesn't matter. Um, now, you don't want to spend 10 minutes on one spot, um, but you can spend a good minute or so on any spot you find. Um, and then you would want to go further towards the medial side, and that's going to get that VMO tendon. So clunking, clunking. This one's pretty small, and you probably can't see it because of the angle. Um, but what I want to show you then is getting perhaps close to and under this kneecap. So I've kind of grabbed something here on the inside and it is getting a lot smaller. <laughs> I've been working on this a ton, but I'm, I'm getting really close to my kneecap now. And that actually is feeling pretty good on me. So I'm gonna move to this side and see what I can show you guys. Cause this is the really unhealthy stuff on me. Oh, there it goes. So I can feel my patella right here. And, oh, okay. So you kind of have to slide your thumbs almost under it and then rotate. And basically what you're doing is isolating the, the adhesion away from the kneecap. So you're kind of moving the kneecap out of the way and then performing the rotations. So I can get under here and see if there's anything there. Not really, it's all right there. Boom, 
boom. Um, when this was really acute for me, when I was in my um, initial stages of acute injury, I was able to get what felt like a good quarter of an inch under my kneecap, and that was a weird feeling. But I want you to keep in mind, the kneecap is, it's movable. Like it should actually move. You don't want a kneecap that is totally rigid and stuck in place. Um, of course, you don't want it moving too much, but it is movable. So you can kind of move it out of the way. Um, you may notice I'm kind of stabbing myself here and getting a little red from my uh, fingernails. I did cut them for this video, um, but apparently not enough. So if you're going to do this on yourself, maybe cut your fingernails so you don't um, stab yourself too hard. Uh, so that you're going to repeat that all around here as much as you can. Now, I have another video on the channel that I put out recently where you're going to use your elbow to do some quad fascia release. And I like combining these two. So if you haven't done that one yet, I would encourage you to add that to this one. We'll put a link to that video in the description below this one. Um, but I want to talk now about getting in here because um, you may have an adhesion actually in this patella tendon um, fascia or you know any of the other fascia here. There's quite a lot going on um, around the knee fascia wise. I can't find the adhesion anymore that I had here, but I did have a pretty sizable one here. And when I released it enough and then straightened my leg, pop, I got a really good pop um, out of my knee and I got greater range of motion. So this is just something to check is this lower stuff. So same thing. You want to just play around with placing your fingers there, compressing the tissue, rotating back and forth. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, now, I want to talk about opening up all the fascia of your quad, especially, but as much as you can around the knee, because one of the reasons um, you're going to have unhealthy fascia here and then have knee issues and have maybe an unhealthy bursa or a knee joint that's not happy or tendons or ligaments that aren't regenerating like they need to is a lack of blood flow. And while releasing the fascia directly in and around the knee, if you have an injury like this is important, if you don't also open fascia in the rest of your leg, um, it may not be getting the blood flow it needs. So I would include a lot of quad and quad hip flexor fascia release here. Um, if this is you, if you're finding a lot here, a lot of IT band quad fascia release for all the quad IT band fascia that gets stuck together, maybe some adductor fascia release. Um, and then maybe some calf fascia release as well if you really want to be thorough. Of course, I always recommend doing your whole body as much as you can so you're optimized. Um, and I want to show you just a couple other things to include here um, in different positions for some knee mobilization. All right, this is just going to be some mobilization of the knee from straight to bent using gravity. And then we're going to use the thumbs here again to just hold tissue in place. And we're essentially trying to stretch it a little bit like taffy here. So this is a bit more of a pin and stretch versus compress and shear, but it's really beneficial just for um, creating some heat and some friction and mobilizing tissue that maybe is limiting your range of motion to bend your leg. Um, so as you're doing this and you can place your thumbs in kind of different places and play around with what feels good to you. What feels good to me right now is this spot right here. And I'm noticing that it's really dense. So what I might actually do is stop on this spot and go back and forth. And I'm noticing like, yeah, that's actually like a, a, an adhesion, a density that I wasn't able to get um, in that other position. So I might make a mental note of it here and try to come back to it with my thumbs in the other position that I just showed you or potentially with my elbow, but I'm gonna make a note of that. Um, but we're gonna try to just get a little bit of looseness and fluidity back just from here. So basically this is as simple as it is. It's just compress, drop your leg, compress, drop your leg. That's it. And this is making my thumbs really tired, <laughs> um, my hands generally. And then the other thing that I like to do in this position is actually just put my hand um, under my leg and drop completely. So I'm letting this relax completely. And if you have really tight 
tissue and tendons and fascia in the kneecap here. This is a really great way to just let it oh, let go of all tension. So it, you know what happens usually in these uh, acute injury instances is this fascia just feels like it has to protect, 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 be on guard, be on guard, you know. And if you're still in the phase of recovery, like I am right now with my MCL, I still have an MCL that's injured, um, all this other tissue is gonna be on high alert, hypervigilant. So this is just a really nice way to let everything relax a little bit. And then again, just slowly straighten it out and maybe do a few mobilizations. Um, so there you go. Okay, and this last one is gonna be done in a chair or perhaps hopefully, uh, a stool, like the one I'm in a bar stool or something like that. Um, if you're really tall, a chair, a normal chair might not work. We need a little leg swing for this. So it's kind of the same idea as the one we were just doing lying down, where you're going to use just your thumbs again, and then dry, pull it back from the kneecap, and then let your leg drop, basically. And you can do that all, all around, wherever it feels dense. But if you find something that feels like an adhesion, you can go side to side and just kind of let it swing. So that's a reason I like this one in a chair. You can't really do that um, in the other position. And obviously when we're on the floor, you're not gonna be bending it like this. So what this does is actually give it more of a stretch. So it's in more of a stretch right now. This is a contraction. So it's actually great for loading all of the fascia into uh, you know, basically your thumbs or the knee area so you can grab it. Um, but then this movement is gonna be really great for not only stretching it, but then shearing it. Um, so you can find as many of those little adhesions as you can and do some side to side um, or just pull it back and let your knee drop um, or all of the above, whatever feels the best for you because injuries are individual. Your body may not have the same reaction to the, you know, the injury that I had. Um, so you're just going to play around, use all, all of the things I just gave you to see what works best for you and your body. And then definitely get up and walk around after this. And as I said in the beginning, just use a lot of caution. Um, don't be afraid to experiment, but go really slow. Go really gentle at first and make sure you're listening to your body. So if you get anything at all that feels dangerous or unsafe, like a sharp shooting pain or electrical or just it's a danger signal from your body, just, just don't do it. Um, so back away from the kneecap and maybe start further away from the actual knee joint itself and then work your way towards it when you feel like you really know what you're doing. Um, so I'd love to hear if you try this and how it feels for you. And I'd especially love those of you with an actual acute injury, whether it's been years um, or it's recent, for you to comment below. Because one thing I know for sure is when we hear other people saying, oh my God, I tried this and it worked, or hey, I tried it and this one thing worked, but this other thing didn't, or here's what I did that worked for me. Um, I know it's gonna inspire somebody, somebody else, especially for those injuries that were maybe a long time ago that you feel a little um, not hopeless about, hopefully, but um, I know it can be difficult to find answers for lingering pain that's from compounding compensations from so many years of an injury maybe not being dealt with properly. Um, so give this a try. Share your experience below. Um, if you have any questions for me about this, post them below as well. I'll do my best to answer them or make a future video if it's um, maybe providing me with a new topic for something to film for you guys. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.